This is day three of reading Revelation. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write this, The Son of God, whose eyes are like a fiery flame and whose feet are like polished brass, says this, I know your works, your love, faith, service, and endurance, and that your last works are greater than the first. Yet I hold this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, who teaches and misleads my servants to play the harlot and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her harlotry. So I will cast her on a sickbed and plunge those who commit adultery with her into intense suffering unless they repent of her works. I will also put her children to death. Thus shall all the churches come to know that I am the searcher of hearts and minds and that I will give each of you what your works deserve. But I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not uphold this teaching and know nothing of the so-called deep secrets of Satan, on you I will place no further burden, except that you must hold fast to what you have until I come. To the victor who keeps to my ways until the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod, like clay vessels will they be smashed. Just as I received authority from my father, and to him I will give the morning star. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this. I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. Therefore you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white, because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write this. The Holy One, the True, who holds the key of David, who opens and no one shall close, who closes and no one shall open, says this. I know your works. Behold, I have left an open door before you, which no one can close. You have limited strength, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the assembly of Satan, who claim to be Jews and are not, but are lying, behold, I will make them come and fall prostrate at your feet, and they will realize that I love you. Because you have kept my message of endurance, I will keep you safe in the time of trial that is going to come to the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may take your crown." The victor I will make into a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never leave it again. On him I will inscribe the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from God, as well as my new name. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write this, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich and white garments to put on, so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed, and by ointment to spear, smear on your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love I repro reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne." as I myself first won the victory and sit with my Father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches.
Today we hear the second half of the letters to the churches. Once again here, what he's saying to each individual church applies in a particular context, but it's hard not also to see some of these things as having relevance for us. To the church at Thyatira, he talks about the fact that there is division or divisiveness. I mentioned this earlier in the last commentary. It's not difficult to imagine how when a church is being persecuted, division would be an issue, but also would be a major liability because if there are factions, it's much easier to, to break in and break them up. So in their context, churches under active persecution hanging together would have been very important. But it is important for us as well. It's not uncommon in American towns to find two or three churches of the same denomination within a short distance of each other. And that's usually a sign that at some point or another there was a schism in the church and one group of people took off and built their own church and decided they would have nothing to do with those people anymore. They would be pure and they would be separate. This is both a scandal to the rest of the world, looking at us saying they can't even get along with themselves. Why should they get along with us? Uh, and also a source of, of shame in our faith because we are told that Jesus prays that we should all be one. So there's something in division that is not simply a practical problem, but also a spiritual one. At the same time, the church at Thyatira is given credit for the fact that its last works will be greater than its first. In other words, it sounds like even while it is having some flaws and having some problems, it's also able to continue to do some good work for the kingdom of God. The other thing that I see in this is this tension between personal and communal virtue. Whether what really matters is how each person behaves or if, in fact, it's also important how the community behaves as a whole, whether, in fact, it's possible for communities of Christians, communities of people, to sin collectively. I think we have seen plenty of evidence of that in the last century, century and a half. So it's worth thinking at times about what our community does and how our community is faithful more than just how each individual member of it is. Turning to the church at Sardis, there's this worrying line. You have the reputation for being alive but are dead. Yikes. Can you imagine being told that? You look great from the outside, but if you look on the inside, there isn't a whole lot going on. At the same time, I think part of what the author is trying to say is that somehow the works of this church are not complete in the sight of God. There's more to be done. There's more to live up to the promise that God has put into the community's heart. And so they have more that they need to do in order to truly be alive inside as much as they are in terms of how they look to the outside world. The Church of Philadelphia gets a nicer review. It says that they have limited strength, but somehow they've managed to keep the word that they'll be safe in the time of trial. I think part of what's being pointed out here is to turn back to God's economy again, that somehow having few resources isn't necessarily a block to being faithful, that having limited strength, few, few numbers, little money, not much credibility in the community isn't necessarily enough to shut us down. Somehow the Spirit can work even in those conditions, can work even through those who appear to be powerless in the eyes of the world. Useful to us as the power and influence of the church as a movement in the world seems to be receding. And then once again, the church at Laodicea gets a pretty harsh review. It's neither cold nor hot. Once again, I would hate to open up a letter and find that someone was saying that about me. It says they are rich but wretched. Here again is a statement about stewardship, about the way money is used. To have a lot of it but not be somehow using it for the good of the kingdom of God, not God, not using it in order to be charitable, not using it in order to have a rich community in the sense of rich in spirit is a problem. 
there's this interesting metaphor of the idea of buying the gold of Jesus, that the treasure that God offers to us is more valuable than any worldly treasure. And with that, we come to the end of the message, messages to the churches. And so we should think of a few summary points, probably, about what all this has, has told us. Certainly, we're being told through all of these messages that we as the church, we as a church, are expected to produce for the kingdom of God. It's not enough simply to be nice people, to love one another, to meet occasionally, to hear the word. Somehow we have to be building the kingdom of God, however we may understand that, in order to be full, to be complete in the sense that the writer of Revelation is suggesting. Faithfulness is important, but it seems that there is also some importance of works. This ties the writer of Revelation back to the writer of the letter of James, who was trying to say that faith without works is dead. And then through each of these, every one of these little messages ends with some version of the line, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Somehow we must, as one of the churches, continue to be listening for the voice of the Spirit. We must continue to be in inspired, to be filled up with the, 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 the power and the wisdom of God that is all around us all the time, but that is easy for us to ignore if we're not listening for it. So with that, we end for today, hoping that perhaps if we were one of the churches listed in this section, we would be somewhat more favorably reviewed, or at least would be given credit for what work we are able to do. Oh,